Hi everyone. Um, thanks Adi and Michael for giving me the stage. Um, I'm going to speak for the next five minutes about uh, the possibility of Israel joining the uh, ISO C++ uh, standard committee. Um, this uh, talk is uh, uh, a direct continuation of uh, Bryce's lightning talk at the Core C++ uh, conference. Uh, his slides are online and uh, there's a lot of um, valuable information that I'm not going to talk about. So if you want to learn more, uh, there's a link at the end and uh, uh, it's also the, the okay. The conference website. So uh, this uh, idea came from Bryce, and also uh, we had this, a nice conversation with Michael Wong when when he visited here a few months ago. So. Uh, my agenda is to speak about two parts and uh, what what we can do to join the committee <laughs> and ways we can participate um, until we have uh, a member that is uh, uh, really uh, join the committee so um, the committee uh, like when we talk about the c++ committee um, the technical name for it is WG21. Uh, that's the committee within ISO that is dedicated to C++ and they write the standard. Uh, they are part of a parent committee called SC22, which uh, is dedicated to all programming languages that are standardized uh, within ISO. Uh, and I am you'll see in, in a few minutes why this is important uh, there are currently 22 uh, member countries in the parent committee in sc22 and i think wg21 has around 12 uh, member countries right now uh, and underneath at WG21, there is a whole a range of uh, smaller uh, subcommittees dedicated to different uh, subjects. Uh, I think there are around 150 people uh, contributing, so uh, it's a big, uh, big structure. So why join the committee? I think the most uh, important reason is to be, be able to um, be part of the C++ uh, community, the world C++ community. Uh, right now, everybody sitting here um, can't really contribute um, ideas or um, can't really uh, give input uh, to the, the standard. Uh, like the, uh, the, the entire Israeli C++ community it doesn't have this uh, this way. Um, if we had uh, a member, uh, he he could be a channel for all, all the input uh, coming from here. Uh, there are many people here that have enough experience to be able to contribute, but we, we can't really do it right now, at least not directly. Uh, so I think that's the most important uh, reason to have a member. Uh, another reason, uh, in my opinion, uh, like for me, keeping, keeping up with uh, the trends, with the uh, new development in the standard is really tough. I'm still trying to catch up with some uh, changes in uh, C++ 11. <laughs> so that's a way to um, be at the cutting edge and uh, keep uh, up to date. And also, uh, 
for, for some people it can feel good to be part of the, the development itself and uh, actually make the, the, the decisions that uh, we all have to, to live with, uh, like uh, will concepts be part of the standard or not? Uh, so I think uh, it can probably feel well uh, to be in the room and, and contrib contribute to this uh, process. Um, how can we join the, the committee? Uh, the, the, the main idea is that we need to create a, an Israeli um, a copy of the basic structure of the committee. Um, right now, Israel doesn't have a, a representative uh, of course, in, in the C++ committee, but also we don't have a representative in SC22, in the parent committee. So, um, we need to mirror this structure uh, inside uh, the Israeli um, standards uh, body, which is Mechonet uh, Kanim, the Israeli Standard uh, Institute. Uh, because only... Uh, the national body can uh, join, uh, like uh, formally join the committee. So uh, the, the minimum thing we, we need to have is a member that will join uh, WG21 and SC22. Uh, so at the minimum, this can be one person. And of course, if more people want, it can be um, a larger structure uh, as complicated as we, as we want. Uh, but uh, th that's the, the requirement. So um, you can maybe you're rather wondering what are the requirements to be able to join? Uh, um, do you need the, to pass exams or do you need the, to be approved by, I don't know, the Knesset or something? So actually there's no requirement uh, except uh, you need to be able to attend the meetings. Uh, there are three uh, yearly meetings of the committee. Uh, they are um, one week, but each, each meeting is one week. And the member needs to be able to attend uh, most of the, the meetings. So uh, usually this means someone uh, that uh, is working for a company that uh, can uh, spare him for these three weeks uh, every year. Uh, the um, funding for this uh, can be obtained uh, from Misrad Kalkala, Minal Kishre Chutz. They have a, prob a program where they uh, fund up to three members. And the funding uh, is, it depends on the size of the company. Uh, smaller companies get more funding. I think uh, it's up to 80% if I remember correctly. Uh, so uh, it's, it's tailored for small companies to be able to participate in, in, in uh, international standards. Uh, so the, in principle, the money uh, can be subsidized. Uh, but that's the, the main requirement. You need to be able to attend the meetings uh, and uh, understand the, the proposals well enough to be able to vote. Um, these are the requirements for the for WG21 because there's no uh, member in S SC22, the current committee, and this person also needs to attend a yearly meeting of the parent committee. Um, this is where the actual voting uh, really occurs. Um, so uh, SC22 is responsible for se like the, the standards for several under, under uh, several other languages like uh, Fortran, I think, and Pascal. And so I'm not exactly sure um, 
if the, like this person is expected to actually <laughs> vote on Fortran and approve uh, the standards, or is this uh, is this just a formality? Uh, but uh, in principle, this is part of the responsibility. Um, is Fortran still changing? Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> All the time. I, I don't know. Uh, this is a good uh, <laughs> question. I don't know. Maybe there's a, a standard every ten years. I, I don't know how bigger an, an issue this is. Um, also, uh, I think is the parent committee also involved in developing standards for other more uh, more modern languages, or uh, it has like uh, twenty languages, but I think like. Most of them are not uh, actively developed. I don't remember the others. I think uh, Pascal and Fortran are the ones I recognize. But, uh, ah, C maybe, yes. But C is not uh, standardized very frequently, I think. Well, C I think. Yeah, but. In 11, C 11. Okay, but, so that's 10 years. 18 also. Yeah. 18 also. Mm. Okay, so this is a big uh, question mark. Um, also, so the the Israeli Standard Institute doesn't uh, charge money um, for the privilege of being uh, representative, uh, unlike other standard organizations in the world that charge a lot of money. Uh, but I think they do have uh, some uh, bureaucratic requirements, uh, like forms and stuff. Uh, I, I hear from people that know it that uh, the, the <coughs> bureaucratic part can be um, pretty difficult. But uh, that's basically the, the responsibilities. Um, so a related issue is uh, forming a mirror committee, and this is where um, everybody else uh, can participate. Uh, the mirror committee uh, discusses the papers before each meeting and gathers input from, in principle, from all the Israeli community that uh, the member is supposed to represent. So um, this is a way for um, everybody to be part of the process. Um, basically, this means um, reading uh, the the papers that are uh, that will be uh, discussed uh, during the the real meeting, and this is also a way to reduce the workload for the member. And I think there are maybe like there are dozens of papers for each meeting, so uh, the member can be expected. Yeah, now hundreds. it's, now it's 280. Yeah. For, for each? Yes, for each mailing. Okay. It's crazy. So yeah, it, uh, there's a lot of uh, reading to do, so <laughs> um, that's a way to share the load. Um, and also having more people that are um, <coughs> understand the, the process a little bit uh, gives uh, like a, a pool of people that can uh, maybe attend meetings as observers and maybe uh, be uh, come and go as replacements when the the main um, representative is busy. So uh, it's important to have uh, some kind of uh, mirror committee that can um, serve as a, as a backup. Uh, and uh, also, I think it can be fun uh, just to critique the, the papers before each uh, meeting. So um, there are two other ways people can contribute to the standard without having a member. Um, one of them is just to write papers. Um, you don't have to be a member uh, or you you don't have to be um, from a country that is represented to uh, present a paper uh, at the, at the uh, meetings. 
so that's a way um, that everybody can uh, participate right now. Um, but you do have to uh, attend the meeting in person uh, to present your paper. Uh, but uh, if someone has a, an idea for a change to the language, uh, that's something that uh, is, is possible. Uh, and also, some of the subcommittees, the uh, special groups, uh, can invite non-members to participate uh, in the mailing list, the internal mailing list, and uh, to um, like basically do everything except vote. Uh, so if you're interested in uh, graphics or concurrency or one of the uh, specific subjects, uh, you can try to contact the members and uh, um, uh, the, like not all of the um, groups do it, do it, but uh, it, it's, it is a way that you can participate uh, right now. Uh, so um, that's it, I think. Uh, we are um, we are trying to uh, create a process where everybody that wants to be invo involved um, will be able to right now. Um, if you if you have uh, you or some somebody you know uh, wants to be become a part of the committee itself, uh, and that would be great. Um, and so I talk to me, talk to Adi, because there are people that already did some of the the research about this and we can uh, point you in the right direction. Uh, and until then, we're trying to do a pilot uh, of a mirror committee, uh, which is right now it would be just uh, like a simulation because there's no member actually going. But I uh, want to uh, experience uh, reading the papers and critiquing them and trying to to gather input and see what's involved. So uh, right now, I just uh, put uh, just uh, an, an, an empty page uh, on GitHub that uh, that just points to the list of the papers. And I think we'll have like a, a Google Doc where everybody can uh, just um, uh, just pick a paper that uh, is interesting to them and uh, just write their name, and we'll just have, um, I don't know, a meeting or something like this to discuss uh, the, the results. Uh, you can take a look, there are pretty cool papers uh, uh, for the next meeting. Uh, right now, we're just we, we're doing it as, as an experiment, um, partly because uh, the deadline, like the, the next meeting is in two weeks. So uh, we'll just do uh, like a sample of a few papers and just uh, try to um, experiment and um, find a good process that we'll, uh, we'll, we'll use for the, for the Belfast uh, meeting. Uh, that's it, I think. And there are a few links here. This is uh, Bryce's uh, presentation that has other information I didn't uh, mention. And also the ISO CPP uh, webpage uh, is quite helpful. Um, that's it. Uh, unless there are questions. Well, who's interested in this effort? Okay. So feel free to get in touch with Michael or with me, and uh, we're always uh, happy to help coordinate. Uh, we already have somebody, you already have, it's in the standard, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we already have somebody who's got something into the, stand, really? into the standard library. Yeah, I just want to say you don't have to, Kyle. It's highly recommended if you have, like, a change proposal. But if you find someone, like, on the news groups that, that you know, can champion it for you over there, then that also works. Uh, I represent it from my other countries, so we can come back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. 
if, if you can convince someone who is in the committee, yeah, sure, that's, that's all. All right. Thank you, Mark. Thank you.